This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Dr. John Deloney. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in, we'll talk about your relationships, your mental health, your job, your career, your money, and your life, all right here on The Ramsey Show. We do it every Every day we talk about you right in front of you. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. Again, Dr. John Deloney, best-selling author, brand new book in pre-sale right now. Own your past, change your future. You can pick it up at RamseySolutions.com. Dr. John's new book is absolutely amazing. Micah's going to start us off this hour in Philadelphia. Hi, Micah. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Sure. What's up? Hey, so I'm um, just looking for a little bit of financial advice here. Um, my wife and I, we got married this past May. Um, we are both full-time and fully employed or employed full-time, I guess what I'm trying to say. We have about $135,000 left on our mortgage. Uh, we have no other debt or payments at this point. I have about, I should say, we have about thirty-five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in liquid cash at this point, not including our emergency fund. I'm just wondering, Dave, what do I do with it? Wow. Way to go, dude. You got to feel like you're on top of the world. I do, and I don't. It's weird in this in this uh, financial climate. I just, I'm, yeah, looking for advice. What do I do? Yeah. Well, we teach a thing that we believe and have proven to be the shortest distance b- between where you are and becoming a millionaire, becoming wealthy, and that is the baby steps process that we've taught for years. And baby step one is $1,000 saved. You've done that. Two is you're debt-free but the house. You've done that. Three is you've got your emergency fund. You've done that. You should now be putting away 15% of your household income into retirement out of your budget, are you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Way to go. More? Yeah. Actually, I uh, we have $500 towards a Roth IRA each month. More than 15%? Uh I did not do the numbers. I believe that that's right around, um, that's on top of our, we each have uh, 401ks as well. Okay. You need to add up what you're putting into retirement. It does not need to be any more total than 15% of your household income. Then you don't okay. have kids. You just got married, I assume, right? That's correct, yes. Okay. So baby step five is kids' college. We can skip that one for now. And baby step six is we put everything else on the house until the house is paid for. So that means 35000 is going on your house today. And if you back down the retirement to 15%, probably more of your budget monthly can go on your house as extra payments. The average millionaire that we have studied in America pays off their home in 7 to 12 years. We call them baby steps millionaires because they followed these baby steps. How old are you? I'm 25. What's your household income? About one thirty. What's the balance on the mortgage? One thirty-five. Oh, you're going to have this house paid for in five years, four years. I would love that. I would. Lo- I would love that. Yeah, you're going to have a paid-for <laughs> house by the time you're thirty, if you do what I'm talking oh, about. Because we threw a hundred. We just threw thirty-five at it. That leaves a hundred. You make a hundred and thirty-five, and so twenty thousand bucks extra a year, and you're going to be done in five years. Yeah, you're going to. You're going to really be cooking, man. And that's going to put you in a position with no house payment to save like a maniac for retirement and wealth building. And you're going to become a millionaire probably by the time you're 35. Yeah. And then you have kids, you can dump into their college fund and be done with that real quick. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Good for you guys. College fund becomes a wink and a nod at that point because you've gotten yourself so in control and you're just ready to go. Cash flow in college. Man, what a great start! Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. That's it, what when you do it right, and you t- when you're when you it was modeled for you the right way to do it, and then two people had that model and they come together, man. Now you're talking about you're not changing family trees, you're changing family legacies at that point, right? Yeah, this is this kid's a legacy move. Yeah. yeah, yeah, way to go, dude. Very well done. Caleb's in St. Louis. Hey, Caleb, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave and John, I appreciate y'all taking my phone call. Sure, what's up? Um, I have a question. Um, my father-in-law, uh, whenever my wife was young, uh, his company offered a stock option that he could buy into for her. Um, and then when we got married, it became ours. Um, and it's grown. It's about $16,000 now. 
Uh-huh. And we're wondering, is there any way to put that into um, some kind of child's um, college saving fund or anything like that for a without any tax implications? No. No. Cash okay. it out. Pay the cash it out. Pay the taxes. They're not going to be much. Yeah. Okay. So what was it right. worth? When, what was it worth when she got it? Do you have any idea? Um, you know, it's gone up uh, these past couple years. Um, you know by. 60, 70 uh, cents, um, and we have about 100, uh, 100 uh, units of stock. Yeah, but I mean, there, let's so. say 16000 total dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So let's yeah. say it was worth 10000 when she got it. You're only going to pay taxes on the gain over what it was worth when she, was, when she got it. And the okay. gain is at 15%. And so if it's $6,000, six, uh, 15% is only 900 bucks. Okay. So, so you don't right. ha- you're not going to have a big tax bill here. It's going to be right. a tax uh, bill. One other, one other follow-up question to that then. So if we would put that into a 529 or something, um, is that something we could use to pay for our uh, children's private education, you know, while they're in grade school and high school and stuff? Yes, but I wouldn't. You wouldn't? Okay. No, I would, I would save it for college until you've got college covered. If you've got more than you need for college, then, yeah, I might start doing some uh, s- some uh, private schooling at that point. But you need to cover private schooling out of your budget or not do it. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Sure. Thanks hey, for the call. Hey, Dave, if you get a lump sum like that, they would have fifteen grand to dump into the Roth, I mean, to a 529. Is there a cap on how much you can roll into a 529? It's not a roll. It's just a purchase. Uh, a purchase? Just a purchase. Depends on the 529. Some of them are up to 50000 okay. Some of them are maxed at 10000 Is that annually or annually. at a time? Yeah. Okay. Annually. Uh, and so, you know, he, if he got, you know, if he ends up with 15000 bucks, has two kids, mm-hmm. you know, he drops 7500 easy easily into two 529s for each kid. And you got a really good head start on college at Absolutely. that point. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, but college would be um, more important to pay cash for in a student loan epic failure environment mm-hmm. than worrying about paying cash. If you don't, you don't bleed your college fund dry paying cash for private school for, the, for a, a kindergartner. Right, right. And, and people do that because there's very little data that shows that where you went to kindergarten causes you to succeed. <laughs> Very little data. I mean, bet- between the extremes. Well, especially the gap between public and private school. The, well, that the, the depends on the school system, obviously. Uh, but I'm saying that the yeah. bottom end versus the top end, yeah, there's a gap. But the whole the bell curve in the middle, not a lot of gap. My wife reminds me all the time that if you there's a few things you do inside your home that have much more predictive value on where your kids exactly. how successful they are than than the other. Exactly. Very few pieces of data that say you went to a $25,000 a year kindergarten and that's why you're where you are today. If parents will read, parents will read to their kids and parents will connect to their kids. There's go, the, yeah. the long-term data there is much, much more predictive. Exactly. Exactly. This is The Ramsey Show. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper. Jumpstart your CFO career.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. Matt is with us in Atlanta. Hi, Matt. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave and Dr. John. Hey. Um, so basically, my wife and I are about to finish Baby Step 3, and also she's pregnant. And I know that if, when people are in Baby Step 2, you say to pause, pile up money, but I'm not sure about when once you're in like four should is that still the advice no Um, you have an emergency fund yeah so basically i um i have a twenty thousand dollar check i'm waiting on seven of that will be used to finish up fully funding the emergency fund Mm -hmm. and then i'm trying to figure out what to do with the rest good for you cool is this your first baby yes awesome congrats man congrats do you know what you're having thanks no, no, we don't. No. Oh, that's cool. If it's a boy, John or Dave are great places to start for names. <laughs> well, her, her, her dad's or name John is John. Her so dad's name is John, so I, I feel like that's where you should or probably leave. John, way. yeah. But anyway, yeah, I, so I Uncle David. So oh, there's, there you there's go. A chance there. Nope. There you go. You never know. So, so did I. Me there's yeah. a chance. So, uh, yeah, you just your, your emergency fund. If it is beefy enough that you have a comfort level. And your wife has a comfort level. If you're at the six months, if you need to be at the six month side to feel comfortable, go ahead and take some of the money and get to the six month side. If the seven thousand mm-hmm. is is only getting you to the three month side, I don't care what you do with it as far as that. But fill that emergency fund to where okay, I'm a brand new dad, brand new mom. First time I've done this. It's kind of exciting and scary all at the same time. And so I really want to have enough in my, um, you know, a big enough umbrella, you know, in case it rains. I need I need a good mm-hmm. emergency fund, and so whatever makes you happy there, whatever makes you feel comfortable there is fine. But the um, th- then beyond that, we're just going to work the rest of the baby steps. You need to be setting up your budget to begin to put fifteen percent of your household income into retirement, and um, and if you want to use some of this uh, cash, then. After the baby comes, you can set it over in a savings account and use it to open a 529 after the baby comes and you get the Social Security number. Right. Hey. And, and then more specifically, what I'm, is what I'm wondering is um, if I should use 12000 of that to fully fund a Roth for tax, tax year last year, you know, before that deadline, um, just because I don't have a match. So Roth is sort of, you know, my best bet as far as. It won't hurt. You know. Won't hurt anything. Okay. If you want to do that, that's fine. Or you could set instead of setting seven in the, uh, or you could do maybe three things. You could uh, use some of it to start the five twenty nine and some of it to fund a Roth. Hey Matt, are you expecting any loss of income here? Uh, yes, a little bit. Okay, you may so, want to cover that too. Yeah. So one of the things I'd recommend, and yeah. if you haven't already, and we've talked about it on the show a million times. I'd sit down with your cash position and see what it would look like to go sit down with your um, with the people who are going to deliver your baby with the hospital and come up with a, a, a prearranged price. A lot of ambiguity. The reason you would stack up cash because you don't know what's coming. And the more you can put a pen to paper and say, this is the amount of money we're going to lose every month while my wife takes time off or I take time off. This is the amount of money the birth's going to cost. I mean, it gives you a lot more peace as you're heading into this new season of your life. Yeah, if you got it all detailed out. But it's beautiful that you have this check coming and Absolutely. you're hitting this hitting the stride all at this time. So here's the thing. If it takes you three months to uh, implement all this after the baby comes, that's all fine. And that gives you some... You're going to have a lot more knowledge about all the uh, variables by then than you have today. Yeah, there's nothing like uh, <laughs> sticker shock of diapers cost. have. I think they're laced with gold. Are they? They are so expensive, <laughs> right? They're a million dollars. Like, so I had an idea. I was way off. So it took me a couple of months to settle into this is the new rhythm. This is how much it's going to cost to have this little human in our house now. Yeah, it's it's that, that and the formula stuff. Yeah, Ooh, man. it's real. Paul's with us. Paul's in San Antonio, Texas. Hi. Hey, Paul. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than we deserve. What's up? Uh, well, uh, to start, I found you guys by accident scrolling about a month ago, and now I've turned into a daily listener. You That's our best promotion. <laughs> yeah, so, Welcome to the gang, uh, man. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, so, uh, with everything since 2019... I personally, uh, I've done everything backwards. Uh, I went from being in a very good position and making plenty of money. My income has been cut by more than half after my company folded. I moved my co- my family to Texas so I could move here around because I do construction. 
Um, unfortunately, my wife cannot work right now. So we're a single income family and I'm getting ready to start a small business on the side uh, with things that I already own so I can minimize the, uh, the costs and you know, I only have to get my licenses and my insurance and everything. Um, I make dirt for money right now at the company I'm at and I'm wondering if maybe I should just do the other job 100% just jump head in or if I should just try to do it on weekends for the time. Uh, what's dirt? What do you make? I make nineteen an hour. That's not dirt. And, and, and how many I, are you getting? I, are you getting forty hours? Uh, some weeks forty, some weeks uh, I'll get like seventy three. Okay. Um, All right. So you're getting? Yeah, you're not. That's not dirt. I mean, you're not maybe making what you used to make, but that's not a. Yeah. There's yeah. no shame in that situation, and that's a whole lot more than zero. Which is yeah. what you'll make if you don't get jobs lined up in your new gig. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you work yeah. the you work the side gig as a, a weekend thing until you get some real money coming in and a bunch of jobs lined up. And when you can get more okay. jobs lined up than you have time to do on the weekend, then we can talk about backing down your hours or quitting the day job. But um, okay. you don't you don't jump from um, hero to zero. In any time okay. anybody has backed themselves into either this answer or that answer, I always want to step back one more step. You could need to get another job for a while. And there may be another construction yep. company there in Texas that's going to pay you $24 an hour or $28 an hour and guarantee you time. It may be that there's an intermediate step. And I know you don't want to take a new job because you're starting this new one and you hope this new one's going to, going to take off. But you may have to do that for a season, right? Yeah, if it takes you six months to a year to get your weekend thing moving, then mm -hmm. if you made 24 somewhere else instead of 19 at this place, which you're not thrilled with this place, six times you mentioned that in the early days of this conversation. So uh, why isn't your wife working, you said? Um, we're actually working with an immigration lawyer. She overstayed her visa many years before I met her, and part of the part of that is uh, she's not allowed to work or it will automatically fail her for overstaying or something crazy like that. Okay. So how long does this take to get the immigration thing cleaned up? Um, well, I paid my deposit to my lawyer in March, and I have to come up with the remainder. It's another $4,800 to file the paperwork and then wait for the courts. March is yesterday. A March a uh, year March ago? last year. Yeah. So how long does this take? Oh, uh, well, they won't move forward with it until I have my full payment. and. Oh, so they're waiting for income. a year on you to finish paying them? Yeah. Well, this is a priority that you haven't made a priority. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a major one. Um, like, I've defaulted on a few things, trying to put some money away for it, and yeah. How much is your truck payment? Uh, my truck payment is four ninety nine. Yeah, sell your truck. No, yeah, so you're gonna um, lose. You're gonna lose your wife. I, yeah, sell your truck, yeah, brother. And, and I do have my motorcycle up for sale. I own it free and clear. Good. Trying to sell it. What will it and, sell for? Uh, uh, I'm trying to get 9500 for good. it. Good. That'll so. pay the lawyer. Do it. Yeah. Motorcycle for spouse. Yeah. That's a good trade every day of the week, brother. <laughs> yes. Uh, most spouses. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine her walking outside and seeing that thing in the driveway for the last year. And this hasn't been paid. Sell it. Oh, yeah. 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 You got a bunch of other stuff around your neck right now you need to get off from around your neck called debt. Uh, in order to get her immigration straightened out so she can make money. And guess what? You can make more money, and you don't need to be starting a business with no income while you've got all these other things you're having to go into default on to try to put stuff together. So you need to clean up a bunch of debt, and uh, you need the extra income of the extra side hustle plus your new job, plus your new job that John was talking about where you make money. So, and, and yeah, you're probably selling the truck, selling the motorcycle, getting yourself out of debt, moving in the right direction. Hold on. I'm going to send you a copy of the Total Money Makeover. We'll show you how to do this, brother. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. 
Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000. All thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. John is selling very well in pre-sale. Own your past, change your future. It'll make you laugh, cry. I did both. And it'll challenge you for sure. Uh, when you take the steps outlined, you'll take advantage of the free therapy that is part of the pre-purchase deal. You're set up to win. And right now is a really good time because people are kind of, uh, there's something about coming out the backside of this pandemic stuff that has, uh, people are kind of have had a, existential wake up that maybe shiny toys aren't everything well you know the ramsey millionaire study we did um we didn't do a full study there but we've done a small study just checking in with people how are you doing and it's overwhelming how how rough people are doing out there mental health is tough relationships are busted up people are scared hurting it's it's um i knew it was rough i did not know it was this rough yeah it's a tough season for people out there and and, you know the thing is the and these aren't people that necessarily um were uh, in a line around the block for therapists before, and, no. and but they were just going, okay. I, there were some weaknesses in my processes in my mental health. I had not dealt with some things, and I was getting away with that because everything was going good. Yeah. And then when everything wasn't going good, it kind of brought everything boiling to the surface. And so we're getting people. The bad news is people are having to deal with stuff that they should have dealt with. The good news is they're having to deal with stuff they should have dealt with. It's very similar to people living their financial lives with no margin. We lived our lives with no mental or relational margin, right? We just tolerated each other. We were co-managers of a house. We weren't together. Well, we decided that Facebook friends were real friends, and now you discovered they're not. And we ran from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. We didn't have deep discussions with each other, so I just assumed you believed everything I believed and vice versa. And then all of a sudden, man, you ripped that scab off. Well, and you realize that maybe a tweet is really not a discussion. That's exactly right. Maybe it's not a healthy back and forth between someone you love. Or I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know you. I didn't know you thought that or believe that. Right? Yeah. It's just been a great reveal, and um, kind of like when you owe a bunch of money, you have a lot of payments covered, and then all of a sudden you lose your job. It's been very much like that. Yeah, this has been v- revealing. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can do one thing that would make the time that you have even more worthwhile, wouldn't you do it? And uh, you would. Of course you would. We get that. So here's the thing. We're partnering with BetterHelp. We're going to give you a month of free one-on-one weekly therapy when you pre-order a copy of the new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future. And um, th- this is a going to be a number one bestseller. We're selling them. They're going out the door like crazy. John's podcast is unbelievably popular, the Dr. John Deloney Show. If you haven't listened to it, tune in. And so get get this book on pre-order because it's only $20 right now, and you get a free month of one-on-one weekly therapy. And you get the ebook and you get the audio book. So it's quite a few hundred dollars worth of stuff here for 20 bucks. And because uh, we're really trying to step into this area where folks are struggling and and give you some solutions and they're all in this package so get all of it at ramseysolutions.com and let's get started our question of the day comes from blinds.com they have a 100 percent satisfaction guarantee that means even if you mismeasure you pick the wrong color they'll remake your blinds for free you'll get free samples free shipping and with the new promos they run every month you'll save even more use the promo code ramsey to get the best possible deal Today's question comes from Gia in New York. Gia writes, 
I paid off my home, got a raise, and became everyday millionaire last year. My wife and I lost our son in 2016, and to get our mind off of him, I started working on investing and saving. My house is worth $650,000 and was paid off in nine years. We have $400,000 in investments, $30,000 in college savings, and $30,000 cash savings. Now I have zero drive and zero motivation to show up at my $150,000 a year job. Every passion I've, no longer ha- I, I, I've had no longer interests me. My plan for 2022 is to leave my job and get a minimum wage job close to home that I enjoy. My wife thinks I'm nuts. What should I do? Whew. Man, um, gee, if we were sitting here, the first thing I would do is get up out of my chair and give you a hug for about 30 seconds. Long enough that it became uncomfortable for both of us and then long enough that we got through that and you had a chance to breathe for the first time since 2016. Um, anytime you try to skip grieving and especially when you try to plug up holes of grief with stuff or speed or accomplishment, there's always a price to pay. And it sounds to me, my brother, like you are completely and utterly burnt out because you've been running from your son. You've been running from dealing with that pain. And, um, Dave, that's a, that's, it's a common thing. We, I don't know anybody that's never lost somebody that tried to run and jump into something else to stay busy and yeah, come the, up with a new goal. But the man. problem is when you leave your $150,000 job and go to your minimum wage job, you're going to take you with you. You will go with you. And that pain and hurt will go with you. And it, and you're just going to add some more pain and hurt to that's it. That's right. Because you're going to, uh, you, you're, you, you, if you go Jimmy Buffett on a sailboat for a year, you're, you're going to go with you. You will be on that boat. That's right. You're going to go with you. And so you, you can't get away from this. So everybody in this situation, whether it happened a month ago, whether it happened, you know, how long ago, eight years ago, uh, six years ago, I want everybody in this situation to get by yourself all alone and write your son a letter about how much you miss him, what the last few years have been like. Um, and sometimes that's a short letter. Often the folks who have read them to me in a counseling session or they've read them to me um, privately or talked to me, they're long and they, a lot of stuff comes up here. And then I want you to make a call to a counselor and go, because man, there's a lot of pain here. And I'll tell you this, on the other side of this, there is a peace and healing that you have not known for years and years and years. But usually it starts with that first, I haven't said this stuff out loud. It's been locked up in me for so long. I just want to talk to my son one more time yeah. and we're going to start there. That one's hard. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a step. You, you need to get in a situation in a group of people, um, that you're not pretending with. Yeah. That you've heard me. Grief demands a witness. Yeah. You got to have people around you. Yeah. And, and yeah, you, you got to sit down with somebody and you don't need to quit your job. No. Because your job is not the problem. Right. And you're not going to get away from this. Um, this feeling of I have zero drive the, and the zero next, motivation. The other problem is this. The high, there's a high incidence of a marriage loss with the loss of a child. That's right. And it's because people don't deal with it. Right. And, or they grieve differently. One says, let's well, suck it up and get over it. The other, well, you know, you know goes under water. One over here and becomes a millionaire. Right. Uh, and, his wife, and, and the wife's standing by going, you're running so hard away from everything into something positive. Thank God he wasn't doing cocaine with his level of enthusiasm. That's right. That's right. You know, but, um, but you know, it, it's all, it's all, a, it's a, it's a method of running. And so now you hit the wall. That's right. You ran smack into the wall, you bounced off and now you're laying there going, what just happened? I think I'll just go work a minimum wage job. That won't work. Zero drive and zero interest, zero motivation. I mean, that's, you ran out of that's, gas. That's depression, right? That's what that is. You ran out of gas. That's right. That's grief. Go deal with it. Get yeah. in the middle of it. You took all the anger from the loss and you burned it all up doing stuff. Yeah. And, and you when, put a finish line for yourself and you thought, when I cross that line, and, I'm going to be free. And, boy, and when, But when the anger ran out, the fuel was gone. That's right. And now we're just sitting here. You crossed that line and there you were. And I'm just like, what do I do now? Yeah. yeah it's a, it, it, man, I'm sorry. It breaks my heart. It's a hard place to be. It's a horrible <sighs> thing to go through. I can't imagine doing that. Um, but... Yeah, uh, congratulations on winning on the money thing, um, but I'm really sorry for how you got there yeah. and the way it's worked out. So yeah, I would, yeah, get, what John said, let's let's get in a, with a therapist 
Let's get a group of guys in your corner. Start reading something every day that makes you cry. Talk to people every day. Yeah. You haven't cried enough yet. You probably cried a lot, but you still haven't cried enough. And, uh, man, I'm, it's hard. It's hard. Huh. This is The Ramsey Show. Thank you for joining us, America. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about relationships, mental health, careers, jobs, money. It's all right here on The Ramsey Show. Jackson's with us in Athens, Georgia. Hi, Jackson. How are you? Hey, Dave. How are y'all doing? Better than we deserve, bro. What's up? Hey, I just had a question about a possible career change. I have a good job right now with PepsiCo running a delivery route. And I have no debt. It's a 70K job, and I'm hesitant to do it, but I've, I've been really looking into a program that South Georgia Tech offers where you can become a dealer, like a heavy equipment dealer technician for Caterpillar or John Deere, and that's that's the kind of work I really like. And it, I'm kind of hesitant to drop this job because it pays really well, and I could probably you know easily buy a house in the near future if I just stick with it and do it, but Wait a minute, I guess I, the work I, isn't. I, I got extremely... confused. You said dealer, and then you said technician. Are you going to become a diesel yeah. mechanic? That's what I was looking at. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, what's dealer mean? Uh, like a caterpillar dealer. Oh, or work, for, work dealer. for like a caterpillar dealer. Yes, sir. As, yeah, as a diesel mechanic. But... Okay. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. What kind of money will you make? Uh, sorry. What kind of money will you make when you're all? licensed up and you've got a full-time job well i'm sure well there's an internship program so i'm sure i would be very low maybe like 15 to 20 an hour starting out but i've listened to some other guys who have you know stuck with their companies you know 10 years or so and they're making what i make if not better especially the field technicians Mm -hmm. and that's probably what i would want to do the guys who actually you know go out and deliver stuff on the farm or not deliver stuff, but work on stuff mm-hmm. out in the field. Mm-hmm. And well, I, listen, I, CDL, I don't know. So. I'm not sure about heavy equipment and about tractors, but diesel mechanics in general, it's not unusual to hear somebody making six figures. Right, right. So, uh, okay. and, I, and I don't know where you're getting your information about your low paid intern. Uh, cause if you go through a certificate program, you shouldn't be in an internship for very long. Or it'll be part of your academic program. Right. Well, the internship would be during school. Okay. So, like, it's okay. a two-year program total, but you go to school for, like, I believe it's three months and then work for the dealer between semesters. That, oh, and that's... the dealer is sponsoring you, so they're paying for your school. That's fantastic, man. And so look at that not as a – Can you do that while you'd work? Well, I'm, well, you would – the campus is not near me, so – and so I would work for the dealer, you know, of choice, or I say of choice, the one that would sponsor me. So I'd have to find one to sponsor me first. But you have and to quit your Pepsi would... job to do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Pepsi job is, is a, it's a lot of work. Okay. So single, you're single and you make 70 and you're going to go down to 35 or 40 for two years and get your degree and then go up, go up to a hundred, but it's what you want to do. Right. That's if, the, if that's, that's the, the path, process. and that's the question. Then, yeah, I would do that. All I, I, twice in my career, I've taken pay cuts to get to a place that I wanted to go. That ended up working out. And you want to make more at the end of the story. Fold. That's exactly right. Yeah, but you're 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 making right. more at the end of the story. Right. Yeah. So I I guess I just I don't want to get into the field, and then for some reason I didn't look at all the I guess. You can always and maybe go I back and be a less, delivery driver you know, at Pepsi. Always. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. 
True. Okay. Go do what you want to do, okay. man. Well, Enjoy I... your life. Yeah, but here's the thing. Um, I'm I'm gonna. I think you kind of have looked at one possible way, one possible path to accomplish the goal. Because the goal is ten years from today, you're a successful diesel mechanic making a hundred k. That's the goal. Right. Well, I, now yeah, how do we I mean, how I, we got there? You found one possible way that's a, a, a company sponsored thing. The reason it's company sponsored is they have a shortage on mechanics, and this is a way for them to get mechanics. It's a feeder for their recruiting system. That's why this right, company is doing it, this. Right, and part of the deal, if you sign on to this, is that you'll work for that dealer that sponsors you for X amount of years. I'm yeah, and sure I don't want to do that. Are. I don't want to sign something where I'm doing that for too long. Look at that trade off, because that might be. That may not be the best path to get to 10 years from now. I'm a diesel mechanic making 100K. You might be finding it at a, at a local community college for much cheaper, and then you got to go get your own work, which clearly you're going to be able to find the work, yeah. right? It, it's possible that you've got community colleges in Georgia that are free right. or near free, and you go over there and you get your certificate uh, nights and weekends, right. and you keep the Pepsi job, and then you're not beholden to anyone, and you walk out and you're making 100 k after two years, not going through all this stuff, and you're not handcuffed to somebody because they gave you $2 worth of tuition. Right. So you need to really look into that part of it. But the end goal is worth looking at. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to have four different ways you can get there. Right now, you have one. And I'm not positive it's the best because I don't know what the other three are yet, and neither do you. And when you can take all the variables, all the unknowns out of this by continuing to research, then you're ready to pull the trigger on which of the four options, I'm making this up, that you're going to choose. But if you put four really strong, reasonable options in front of you, two of them are going to suck, and one of them, two of them are going to be decent. It's going to be hard to choose between two of them. And, and then you're going to you're gonna find the right way to do this. There's a lot of ways to get at things. There's a lot of ways to open a, 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 a Subway, uh, a sub sandwich restaurant. Uh, a lot of different ways to do it. One is to buy a franchise. Mm -hmm. But it's not the only way you can do it. Right. So there's a lot of ways to get in that business. So you just got to figure out how you're going to get there. And you don't have enough options yet. And you don't have enough information yet. But conceptually where you want to go. We're both on board. And if it, the, the the ultimate question is, is it okay to take a pretty significant pay cut to get where I want to go? Um, and I've got a training. I got absolutely. Temporarily. Absolutely. Yeah. So if, if where I want to go is more money. That's right. And doing what I love. There you go. But this idea that I have to accept less money to be happy Incorrect. is absolute hogwash. Incorrect. That's and right. that's not his question, by the way. All right. Melissa is with us in Salt Lake City, Utah. Hi, Melissa. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Sure. What's up? Um, quick question. I married in – my husband is amazing, but his family is a little bit iffy when it comes to money. And so I was trying to talk with my brother-in-law just a little bit because they're in a rock and a hard spot. Um, he has borrowed money from another family member. And that other family member keeps on uh, changing the agreement, changing things up, jerking him and his wife around. And so I finally said, you know, the best plan might be to go take out an actual loan because the loan people won't jerk you as round as much as this family member is. Was that sound advice to give them? Yes. Okay. Melissa, high five yourself. You've done good. Yeah, because here, here, not only are they okay. getting jerked around and not only is it a moving target and we can't hit a moving target in this case, but uh, Thanksgiving dinner tastes different when you eat with your master mm -hmm. and the borrower is slave to the lender. And so when you sit okay. down, if your mom and daddy are the sweetest people in the world, but they loan you some money until you pay them back, that turkey tastes different at Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And it messes up your Thanksgiving right. and your kids Thanksgiving and your husband's thing, right? It messes up everything. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. and, and the thing is this, um, what, what I would do is add a little icing to this advice and, um, uh, go ahead and whisper in both of their ears, like never do that again. Okay. <laughs> like the one that made the loan and the one that took the loan. Don't ever do that again. Never do this with people that you supposedly love. If you want to help a relative and you have the money, give them the money, no strings attached or don't, but don't loan them money ever. And Melissa, the one other piece of advice I'd tell you to pass along to your brother-in-law, sister-in-law, is get this final payoff from your family member in writing. 
mm-hmm. because you don't want to go to the bank and take out a loan for seventeen hundred dollars or ten thousand dollars, whatever this is, and then a month later, uh, actually you owed me eleven or you owed me twelve thousand. Let's get it in writing. Let's go to the bank, get that number, yeah. and get it. So cleared how up. much do I owe you if I wrote you a check today? That's right. Send me an email with that. Yep. That's all it needs to be. Doesn't have to be a contract. Just send me an email telling me exactly how much it is so I've got a copy and I can remember what you said because I don't want to forget what you said. <laughs> and I don't want you to forget what you I said. especially don't want you That's to. that part of it. And there's that. Oh, that puts the sour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Best-selling author, Ramsey personality, Dr. John Deloney, host of the Dr. John Deloney Show, one of our more popular podcasts on the Ramsey Network, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about relationships, mental health, boundaries, family, careers, jobs, and money. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. Cassie is in Chattanooga. Hi, Cassie. How are you? Hey, you guys. Uh, thanks for taking my call, and it's Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y. Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. How can we help? Okay. Well, um, yeah, uh, kind of an unusual thing, I, uh, maybe not, but uh, probably the best day to call. And I have been signed up to join, uh, do the Financial Peace University at my church, and I couldn't get off for work on the days they were having it, so... That was meant to be for me to get in today. Okay. I am 62 and a half. I work full time and probably will be for a while. Um, I, my mortgage on my home, I only owe $14,000. Great. You have $14,000? My house is, yeah, it, I, it's a 1953 house. Do you have $14,000? I have more than fourteen thousand dollars. We'll pay it off today. But I I have a, a mental what I mean. What do I do after I pay the house off? Dance. <laughs> yeah, do somersaults in the neighborhood. Cartwheels. Yeah, yeah. And Snow stuff. cone machine. It's a it's like a block. It's like I, I have to have something to pay on, or or you know I don't know what to do. I don't know. It's it's a. Uh, because, I, I, because I love you, Kathy, if you need to send money somewhere, you're welcome to send it to me. <laughs> if you want to make payments, John Deloney, Bahama Five. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So uh, here's the thing. You're right. You do need to do this. And, and what's happened is, is you have lived using common sense with a reasonably mm-hmm. frugal situation and have built a level of savings and have avoided normal levels of debt because you have almost no debt. And so just by using good common sense, what do you do for a living? I am a customer service agent for a major health care provider. Okay. I, I have right. people that have Medicare okay. products. Some, somewhere along yeah. the line, your family, your dad, your mom, something that taught you common sense, and you've just lived well. Now what we've got to do is we need to add to the common sense one step, and that step is intentionality. Because otherwise, you're going to feel like you're adrift, which is what you're calling about. That intentionality is two things. One is you need a list of things that you want to accomplish with money. Travel, generosity, a fun purchase that's just for fun, more generosity, and more investing. 
and you need a list of these things, say, this is what I'm going to do with money from this point forward. The second piece of that is you need a written monthly budget, which you do not do yet, that causes you to put the money towards (laughs) that list. You have not won because of a written budget. You've won because of common sense. Now, I'm going to take the common sense and stick that into a budget, a monthly rhythm that causes your bigger goals to happen. And I want you to set some big goals that are fun. And some of them will be for you. Some of them will be for others. And some of them will just be to build some wealth. It could be simple as I want to have this much money in a mutual fund. It could just be a target. Uh, of okay. wealth and the well, wealth is I've to be got, used. Hmm? I've got between one thirty and one forty in four hundred one k. Okay. Well, I would like for you um, to have ten times that. I would like that too. Okay. All right. There's <laughs> well, a goal. Now you got a goal. Now you got a payment to make. Oh, Only no. we're making a payment to Kathy. No, not to John. I guess. Yeah. We're going to make, John's not getting this. John's Bahamas fund's going to starve out here. (laughs) But we're going to make the payment to Kathy, and we're also going to do some generosity. What do you make a year? Uh, Right around 34, gross. Way to go. 34 to 45. Excellent. Okay. So you're going to do just fine. You've done great so far. So good, yeah. And and now you don't have any payments. But here's the thing. You've been making everybody else rich with payments your whole life. And now we're going to make you rich. But I like that. Uh, this I, is I the do. plan. This is the new plan. See, now we got something to be excited about. Hang on. We're going to send you a copy of the number one bestseller, Baby Steps Millionaires. It's going to show you exactly how to take baby steps to become a millionaire because you're on Baby Step 7. You've already done the baby steps. But now we're going to walk you up in and show you the investing side and the wealth building side and help you get there like so many of people have done following this stuff over the years. And Wait congratulations on being debt-free today Woo-hoo! when you pay that thing off. Paid off the house. It's awesome. Neighbors near Kathy, be forewarned, cartwheels are coming. <laughs> All right. Jenna is uh, on the line in Orlando. Hi, Jenna. How are you? Hey, good. How are you guys? Better than we deserve. What's up? Okay, so I'm going to paint the picture for you. My husband is a police officer making um, between 40000 to 58000 depending on the extra details that he works a year. Um, my sister and I own a company. It's been eight years. Um, but last year, we decided to go in a different direction with the company, and we opened up an online shop, and we're selling home goods. Um, and so we have not generated a profit, so I'm not paying myself yet. And we did borrow some money, um, for the company. Why? Um, why have you not made a profit? (laughs) You should make a profit Um, the first month. So so we have had months of November, we made a profit and then December did not. And then what are you spending the money on? So we are spending, we are paying $3,000 a month on an ads manager. And then well, it's not working. 10- yes, they suck. And we're trying. We're trying to figure this out because, right? That's the question. It's like, okay, why is it not converting? Um, and what you know? Well, it did take me but one month to but- figure out. There's one guy. This one sale. This guy has made you. Mm-hmm. He ain't making any sales. Right. Does he have anything so, to sell? Is your product? No, he, he's a marketing we agent. Have, so our product is selling. Um, but the issue is, so obviously the supply chain right now is messed up. So our best sellers, like as soon as they sell out, so if you put in an ad, it sells, and then we don't have enough inventory to keep up with the demand. And so then. This does not sound then, like a full-time job to me. I think you need to get a job. Yeah, it sounds like a hobby. Okay. So. Here's, here's, yeah. Okay. So this is kind of the question. Yeah. My husband, so we're on a single income. Um, we have $21,000 in debt, not including the business debt. Um, and How much business home, debt did you go in? <laughs> so personally, I owe 40000 But if you count on my sister's half, because my financial advisor said that I have to basically take on, like, pretend that like it's all mine just in case she ever walked away. Um, so $80,000 in debt. Um, our, you spent eighty thousand dollars to open an online business that's not profitable. Not yet. What did you spend the money on? Oh my gosh, kiddo! No. Yeah, this is now your side job, uh, your part-time job. You got a new job to pay off your debt from the business failure, and um, that's what you've got to do. Oh my goodness! I'm so sorry. Wow.
Still on baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Um, I, uh, we, we always pick on you right in front of you, but our, our last caller makes me want to go back and revisit just some concepts for a second, not to pick on her or her particular situation or her family or whatever else. Okay, so a couple of uh, principles there. Uh, you do not borrow money to start a business or to run a business. When you do, you increase your chances of failure 10x. 80% of the small businesses fail in the first five years. The number one reason for failure is described as cash flow problems. Let me define that for you, having counseled small businesses for two decades now. Cash flow problems are, I took out a bunch of debt and can't pay the payments while I'm trying to get this thing up and running because I'm not making a profit and I've got to pay the bank whether I make a profit or not. Cash flow problems are, we're so broke, we're not making any money, we're selling some stuff and we're not setting aside our sales tax and sales tax comes due and we used what was supposed to be sales tax money to send to the state and we used it to stay open and pay payroll. It's not illegal, it's just dumb. And then you have a sales tax, have the state revenue department around your neck. Uh, cash flow problems are I'm not setting money aside for the profits I'm making for quarterly estimates for my federal taxes, and I get behind with the IRS. You get behind with the revenue department, the IRS, and the bank, you have cash flow problems. And this is what causes small businesses to fail right there. So you're not doing accounting and you're going into debt and because everything in business has three rules. It takes twice as long as you think it's going to. It costs twice as much as you think it's going to. And you're not the exception. Those are the three <laughs> rules. And I, I have to live by those three rules, and so does everybody else. And 90% of your ideas suck. You're going to make all your money and customer service on about 10% of your ideas, and you're going to conveniently forget all the dumb butt stuff you lost money on to get there. You're going to repress those thoughts, Dr. John Deloney. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I, I can remember some of them because I love telling funny stories of my failures. But I could write an entire book, and it would be very thick on the dumb butt things we have done at Ramsey that have lost money. And the Dave Ramsey ideas have come in here, and I come in with a great idea. And, uh, man, I had to learn to say, never say God told me because it makes God look stupid when the idea sucks. <laughs> it wasn't God, right? So God didn't tell me this. It was just Dave on the running trail. It sounded great this morning when my adrenaline was up, but by the time we went into actual application six weeks later, it was a really sucky idea, and we lost some money on it. And I have done that like, I don't know, 8,000 million times. <laughs> and so this is what's going to happen. And then you end up, uh, the second thing you don't do in business is you don't go in business with partners, particularly your sister. The third thing you don't do is when you're a policeman, you don't allow your wife to do these things. Or when you're a wife, you don't allow your dumb husband to do things, right? We've taken yeah. calls where husbands are... Eight hundred thousand dollars in the hole to start yeah, your this dream is not shop. A, yeah, this is whatever. not a 1940s. Leave it to be. Where you have to ask your husband permission. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about people that you love. You try to keep them from doing dumb butt things. That's right. And it's not a matter of you're squashing my dreams. No, I'm trying to protect our no, family. Yeah, I'm not a dream killer. I'm a nightmare killer. That's. <laughs> Ooh, I like that, Dave. I kill nightmares all the time. Because that right there is a nightmare. That ain't a dream. You know, that's what's going to happen. Forty thousand bucks a year, and all of a sudden you look up and you're a hundred grand household. That's, I mean, nightmare. Yeah. And then what that does inside your house is 
you start hiding stuff, you start getting quiet, you get you feel ashamed all the time. That impacts your marriage, that impacts your parenting, and then all of a sudden you're burning the, 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 the marriage is on fire, right? What a mess. And you're not going to end up liking your sister as much when this is done. No. Hey, let me ask you this, Dave. I've heard this a lot from small businesses over the last year. <laughs> Is there some things people could do about the supply chain? I keep hearing that. And my default setting is, that's not an excuse. Plan better. And I know that's not fair, and that's probably not accurate. How, what are some things you can do? Well, some things you can't control. Okay. Okay. You're just screwed, and it's just going to take some time. Okay? okay. But what you have to do is you have to say, all right, if you have to have a contingency plan can't just assume mm-hmm. stuff's going to show up when they say it's going to show up because they'll burn the boat down and sink it to the bottom of the Atlantic with 400 cars on it or That's whatever, right. you know, that thing that happened the other day, right? So, uh, but I mean, something, sometimes things happen. We had a, a carton of stuff coming from another country uh, on one of those ships that got hit by the storms and it tilted mm. and it dumped a bunch of stuff into the ocean. Yeah. Guess what? Our stuff was in the ocean floating <laughs> around. So, you know, you can't, you know, what do you, you, you can't do anything about that. You know, but the only thing you can do is you can have a contingency plan that says, okay, if that stuff doesn't get here, I'm going to have it made stateside. My margins are going to drop way down, but we're going to get some product out and we've got a way to get to market anyway, at least as a temporary measure. we got a way to continue to build this house as a temporary measure. we got a way to deliver. It may not be the exact thing the same way. We may have to change the product line. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, but the other thing you can do is you actually can go, oh, supply chain sucks. So we probably need to do some planning. We need to make sure that that we have more than four in the warehouse before we run an ad campaign that costs me more than the dead gum item is going to make me in profit because we need to sell 4,000 to break even on this marketing guy we're paying three grand to, and we don't even have enough inventory to do that. Well, that's not good planning. So example of this is, all right, the John Deloney book Mm -hmm. that we're doing. Uh, we have we bought the paper last summer. That's right. In anticipation of supply chain issues. And to get ready to launch a major national bestseller in April mm-hmm. with John Deloney. We knew that this was coming. We bought the paper last summer. Same thing with Baby Steps Millionaires. So I'm not run out of Baby Steps Millionaires. A friend of mine had a book on the bestseller list the same week as Baby Steps Millionaires was number one. And they ran out of books in January, they still don't have paper oh, or goodness. books, and the book was a bestseller. Yeah. Then they missed the window. Yep. Because they did not plan to have the paper last summer, which is what you have to do to get ahead of it. Now, I mean, stuff could happen. The paper could have got dumped in the ocean with the ocean liner going. Sure. I mean, I could have still messed it up, but you got to do a lot of extra planning. I mean, we're building the events, Ramsey Event Center up here on the hill, and uh, I was in a meeting this morning with the building team the the construction crew and everything and you know we're trying to anticipate okay we got to have this fire pump Mm -hmm. which has got a you know and it's got like six valves on it and two uh two chips chips are a problem right and so you know when do we need it well we don't need it till like august order it now but it's no we already ordered it okay we're we're hoping it comes in this month we're going to set it in the warehouse five months ahead of time but then we're not sitting around going we can't open the building because we don't have the fire approval you can't get the fire department approval because we don't have a fire pump so to run the sprinkler system so that's just you know nine million things like that in a building what is there there's i don't know uh, thousands of those items that those guys are having to manage supply chain on right now and they're having to double down on everything and yeah. so what we're doing just buying it ahead and stocking it buying ahead and stocking it and that way the crew can keep working that's right uh but if we have come you know if we have a labor problem that's something we can't you can't stock that one up that's right so you can't you can't anticipate everything right. but you got to think different and you got to think ahead and you got to get ahead of the curve what you said was real important is if you hire a marketing person or you're selling burgers and you have a restaurant with 12 seats, just do some napkin math and say, how many burgers can I actually sell with only 12 seats in this little restaurant here? Well, I have enough to cover my inventory. If I have 3000 bucks, how many of these products do I have to sell? And do I even have that many in the closet in the back? Right. Yeah. That's just napkin math. That's not hard. I mean, there are marketing consultants that are very, very good and worth every dollar. Some of them are someone who got fired from a marketing job and now just wants to work from home. Uh. And so in some 
genres, consultant means unemployed. <laughs> you know, and that's not always true of every marketing consultant. It's not always true of all every consultant. And so I meet people all the time. I've said that for years. Their consultants are like, you don't like us. No, I love consultants. I like the real ones. But I don't like the ones that don't have a job. And so they got business cards that say consultant on them. Gotcha. And then they, cut, you know, and the only sale the guys made was her. Gotcha. You know, that, that's just, that, that. I've had salesmen that worked here. The only sale they made was me to get me to hire them. And I had to undo that decision. So th- this, is, this is business, folks. It's, boys and girls, this is how it works. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. co-host open phones at 888-825-5225 cassie is in Asheville, north carolina hi cassie welcome to the ramsey show hi dave how are you great what's up um so okay i just started i just learned about you at christmas time my aunt gave me that wonderful christmas gift and um it's like some bad ugly socks right (laughs) (laughs) I am in baby step two now. Um, I've been super excited to start this process. And uh, since listening to you, I listen to you all the time. And I realize I have been stupid. <laughs> um, I bought a brand new car last July because um, my other car was getting a lot of repairs and is just getting to that point. Um, and I needed something reliable. And, of course, I thought the only thing I could do was to buy a brand new car. Well, now I want to get rid of it. <laughs> Um, I owe 26,000 on it and my car payments are ridiculous. And literally without this debt, I would only have 4,000, about $4,500 left in debt. Um, the thing is, is I am a server in a restaurant. I don't have a whole lot of income. And right now this time of year, it's really bad. I'm also in school. So it's really hard for me to get super intense and get extra jobs. Um, because I'm putting my school first right yeah. now. Tell me one, um, tell me one more time May. what you owe on the car. Uh, 26000 Okay. And what would it sell for? Do you have any idea? Um, well, I have looked on like Carvana and stuff like that, and the most I've been offered is 25000 If Carvana offers you 25000 you can get thirty. Yep. I'm sorry? I said if Carvana offered you 25000 you can get thirty for it. If you sell it private. Oh, okay. Yeah, sell it private because they're they're not evil. They're not a bad company, but they buy at wholesale in order to sell at retail. And you can just okay. sell it private sale and make enough to get out of it and have no debt and maybe enough to get you a little $2,000 car or something. So go to Facebook okay. Marketplace, someplace like that, Craigslist, and see if you can sell it there. Yeah, and jump on KBB, KellyBlueBook.com, and see what private sale appraisal is on your car. You'll enter a couple of facts about your car. And it'll give you a number on what it's what you can sell it as an individual for. And, and used cars are unusually, first time in, in ever since cars have been made, that used cars have actually gone up in value. 
mm-hmm. this won't be a window that lasts long. So yes, you need to get rid of it. You don't have, you're not making enough money to justify owning a thirty thousand dollar car. Am I right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like I said, I'm a server, so yeah. I don't have stable income. Last year, I made thirty four thousand. Yeah. Um, well, and, and the good news is servers you know, are in, yeah, servers time. are in great demand, and if you're a great server, you can make really good money. You work a lot; it's hard work, but um, right. but you can you can do really well, and you can control that. The problem is right now that this car owns you; you don't own it. Exactly, and I don't even like it. Uh, I mean, I don't. <laughs> I like how it. Lo- I like how it looks, but I don't like anything else about it. And that's what I've learned. That's since what my wife said when we got married, Cassie. Since... <laughs> I'm sorry? That's what my wife said when we got married. I like how he looks. I just don't like anything else about it. No, sell that car. Sell that car yeah. and get yourself a $2,000 car that you think might die in the next few months. It'll get you to and from. It'll get you out of school. And you will sleep like you haven't slept in a long time. Yeah. Yeah, this is driving right, you crazy. Right. This is stealing your peace and not giving you peace. How old are you? I will be 40 in April. What are you studying? Um, I'm in school for the full lot of me right now. Okay, cool. When will you graduate? May. Okay, good, good. So you'll be ready to go get like a big girl job and stuff, right? Be poking people with needles and oh, doing all yeah. kind of fun stuff. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's really in demand right now, too. Yeah. Um, and I'm just, I'm like so excited. Like, I want to get super intense when I'm done graduated. Like, I can work yep. maybe two, three, four jobs doing. And, and you know, the other thing is you know, you'll be able to build up some cash when you do that and buy a $15,000, $20,000 car this time next year for cash. Right. And that's what I was wondering. Like, I don't want to stop on the baby steps. But I didn't know if I should wait until I'm done with school. And Well, and you need to graduate from school. Going. Your first goal is eat. Your second goal is graduate from school. Your third goal is get out of debt. Right, okay. So as long as you're doing those other two things and you got some money, then throw it at the debt. But n- no, we right. don't want to pay off debt and then not have the money for school. And take out a big student loan or something dumb like that. Right. Finish school. Push on through. you got a good goal. You're heading in the right direction. This car is a blocker get rid of the blocker okay yeah you're you're smart you got this congratulations you're going to be well on your way here sell this car well done well done julio is with us in new york city hi julio how are you hey how you doing mr ramsey it's a pleasure man you too how can we help um well i just had a, like a question about like because i'm like overwhelmed in death right now man and i just don't know where to start um i have two car payments because you know, I was originally in my finance. You know, the car started giving me some issues. Um, I started putting a lot of money into the car, and then I started feeling like it wasn't worth it, man. You know, the car was in 2012. Uh, I was still I still owe money for the car. I still do to this day. You know, I was desperate for a car. I made a um, stupid decision. Um, so I got in this car. You know, I had it for like two years, and then um, it started giving me issues with the transmission. I started putting too much money into it. I said, you know what? Um, just get a lease, you know, because I travel a lot, you know, from New York to Pennsylvania, back and forth. So I end up getting a lease. And now you're running, like, now you're running uh, up over your miles. Now you're going to get hit again. Man, your cars are killing yeah, exactly. you. Yeah, the cars are killing me right now, you know, and I just don't know where to start. Okay. Um, what do you make a year? I, have to, uh, I make about 50000 a year right now. Okay. After this job I just started working on the warehouse. Okay. First thing is you uh, suck at make- making car decisions. So yeah, you need to do. say, whatever decision I make with a car, I need to pay cash for it from now on, and I need to slow down and quit. You're re- keep, you keep justifying making these moves with bad uh, justification. I mean, you know, if a car breaks down, it's not nearly as expensive as paying car payments to fix it. So fix it. If a car, you know, so the transmission, every time you have a little problem, you jump to another car instead of dealing with the problem that's right in front of you. So this car that you got right now, you're going to drive it a while while you get this mess cleaned up. Um, and, and then the secondly, we're going to get you on a written game plan, a written budget. And we're, uh, we're going to set you up with Financial Peace University to go through the class and learn how to handle money and plug you into every dollar of the written budget. And you're going to go get on that app and you're going to make every single one of your dollars behave. Are you married? Um, not yet. Okay, cool. How old are you? Um, 32. Good. And you make 50 grand? Yes. Good. Have you got time to work some extra jobs? Uh, well, I actually, like, do have a, um, 
you know, a, job, a second job on the side that I work. Oh, how know. much you make it it? Um, I make about like give or take like two fifty a week extra. Okay. So you got another thousand dollars and a twelve thousand, so that puts you at sixty two. How much debt have you got, not counting this car? Uh not not counting the cars. Um I would say about like maybe ten thousand besides the cars. Okay, so that's not much. That's good. And you got more than one car now? Yeah, he's got yeah. the lease, too. You got a lease, yeah, but lease. what's happening with the other car? The, 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 like the lease, I was going to, like, I only did the lease because I wanted to um, make cheap payments. But, I, like, I was planning to buy the car out at the end of the lease. I wanted to, yeah, but know, it, it's, not, it's not cheap payments because if you're going to go over your miles with all the travel you're doing. You're allotted miles in the lease, and they're going to kill you with the mileage overage. Read your contract. Yeah, no. Okay. Even and so the other car, car what's the, where's the other car? What's the deal with the other car? Well, the other car right now, um, I'm still paying for it, but, like, I don't really drive it. I still go up the road and stuff. Where is it? In your issues. driveway? Yes. Okay. What do you owe on it? Uh, 8800 Okay. What can you sell it for like it sits? Um, I would say about, like, maybe 5500 Okay, five. good. Go borrow $3,000 and get that thing out of your driveway. Then you owe three thousand dollars instead of eight thousand dollars, and then you owe ten thousand dollars, so that's thirteen thousand dollars, and you make sixty-two thousand. Now we got a plan, baby. We're gonna click this thing off. Hold on, we're gonna have the team pick up and sign you up for Financial Peace University. You do everything we teach you to do in that class. You'll be debt free in a year, and you're gonna have an emergency fund in eighteen months. We're gonna change your life if you'll go do exactly what we tell you to do. You can do this. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life, your money, your mental health, your relationships, your careers here on The Ramsey Show. It's tax season, and I know that's thrilling to most people. Uh, (laughs) Nope, don't know anybody loves this. Uh, If filing your taxes does not have to be horrible, we created Ramsey Smart Tax to give you software that you can actually trust. It's not going to try to sell you some more stuff or sell you debt or surprise you with fees you didn't see coming. Smart Tax has steps that are simple and clear. You know you've done your taxes right. No more headaches. Second guessing yourself. Never tack on surprise fees. Never sell your info to scummy companies trying to get you into debt. Not like the other people don't do all of that. When you sign up for Ramsey Plus, it's even easier. You can actually file your federal taxes for free. Don't get taken advantage of by your tax software ever again. Start your free trial of Ramsey Plus, and Ramsey Plus members get to use Ramsey Smart Tax free. So free, 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 free trial for Ramsey Plus. Get into Ram- get into Financial Peace University in every dollar. Oh, and file your taxes with Ramsey Smart Tax. And again, Ramsey Plus members get that free. So that's pretty cheap. It's a pretty good deal. All at RamseySolutions.com slash Ramsey Plus. RamseySolutions.com slash Ramsey Plus. Kevin is, or I'm sorry, Deanna is with us in San Antonio, Texas. Hi, Deanna. How are you? I'm doing well. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. What's up? <laughs> oh, my gosh. My heart rate is like 121. Okay. You're going to be okay. Uh, We've never lost a patient. Well, it's, it's nice being on the phone with both of you. You too. Uh, Okay, my question is, um, I'm still on baby step two, but my uh, term life is ending this year. So last year, I ended up getting long-term health care. Should I not do that since I'm still on baby step two? How old are you? Uh, 56. Long-term care insurance I would not buy until you're 60. 
Okay. Long term care insurance is long term care insurance is nursing home insurance. Right. The right. probability and, and of you spending that, time in a nursing home before sixty years old is point oh 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 five percent. Okay. And the only reason I got that was because I'm by myself and I always thought, Well, I don't want any anybody to burn I don't want to burn anybody. So I figured to do that. That would be but, nice when you're sixty. Okay. So but this is like this is like you, buying homeowners insurance and you don't have a house. Right. And I have a house and I still owe on it. <laughs> okay, that's not and, what I'm talking about. <laughs> right, I'm right, saying right. you bought insurance that is not that is covering something that has such a low probability of happening at your age that I would not buy it right Correct. now. Okay. okay. You need the money I to do other things. What money. do you make a year? Uh forty eight. Okay. And how much debt do you have, hon? Like twenty nine. On what? A four one K loan, uh, a car, and a, a kitchen reno. Okay. All right. And so, so um, number one, have you learned your lesson that borrowing money is not going to make you wealthy or happy? Yes. Okay. And how much do you owe on this car? Eighteen. It's a lot. I know. It is a lot. Okay. Here, here's the rule of thumb I use on cars once we find somebody in a car debt. There's two things we look at. One, can you be debt-free everything except your home in two years? You might, but it's going to be tight. I, I, I've been running the numbers because I paid long-term 167 mm-hmm. I can be that. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. That's $2,000 that's $2, I, I, $2, a year. Yeah. I know. I, I was looking at the head I thought, well, I'll call, find out. I'll okay. cancel it tonight. But you, but you owe 29000 and you make 48000 You could be debt-free in two years, but it's going to be tight. Can you sell that car? And most of your debt is this car. I'd sell it. Well, here's the worst part, is that I just got it, like, maybe last year because I was in a wreck, and they totaled my perfectly paid car. That's Okay. What's the car so worth I that you're driving? The, Do you have any idea? Um, maybe twenty nine. Okay. I think twenty. It, it's a okay. it's a Mazda. Yeah. So here here's what I would do if I woke up in your shoes. You need to think about this if you're going to do it. But I've done this so sure. many times in the last thirty years that it's easy for me to make the decision. So, plus it's not my car. So you got to make the decision yourself. But if I woke up in your shoes, I would sell that car and get me a cash car that I pay $9,000 for, $10,000 for. And then that leaves you just $9,000 in debt. You'll be debt-free by Christmas. And then you're living on a budget, and you're going to rebuild your emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. And your life is going to – I mean, think about what it would be like to have $10,000 in the bank and no payments at all. I know. That's where you could be by this time next year. I about that when I had – I thought about that when I got in the wreck, and then I thought, oh, my gosh. It's like karma. I don't know. Not karma. I'm not. I'm nervous. Okay. It's okay. You're okay. <laughs> it's okay. You're okay. You hear what I'm saying, though? What would yeah, it feel like? Breathe that in. What would it feel like to have no payments and $10,000 in the bank? Oh, it'd do great. You could be there in 12 months doing what I'm talking about. And then that sets you up with a lot of freedom, a lot of peace a lot of mathematical margin to start to build some wealth and retire with dignity. Yes, I agree. That's what I want for you. And I so want you to forgive to... yourself for buying this car. You're carrying around everybody, a lot of shit. Everybody, hey, everybody makes mistakes. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I made so many mistakes. I've got a PhD in DUMB. <laughs> so you're, you know, it's okay. That's, how, that's what qualifies me to do this show. Is I've done almost every dumb thing you people out there have done. That's how I recognize it so quickly. And it's also how I cut stuff out of your life, like just like with a samurai sword, <laughs> instantaneously. I don't right. think it, it doesn't bother me at all. It's like, whoosh, whoosh, sell it. Car's gone. Whoosh, sell it. Just cut it out right there. You know, it's just done. And it's easy for me because I know where you're going to end up if you do this stuff and you follow all the way through. And so the temporary pain is worth it's worth the temporary pain to get to the prize yeah, at the is, end of the story. Just going to sleep. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. own anybody anything. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a different thing, man. I mean, 
And, uh, you know, you talk about all the time how trauma rests in the body and, the, you know, you get tight across your shoulder blades and that kind of stuff. You know, when people do, there, there's a physical change in your body when, you're, when you don't have any payments. When your body recognizes, oh, we're safe now. Yeah. It, 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 you, it falls off of you. It's just like your shoulders drop. Yeah. It's just a, whew. Yeah. So you can, you can, if I can you laugh if, again. What's interesting is I, I've done this with like an audience with like five or 10,000 people. And I say, okay. Hey, everybody, just close your eyes. Think how it would feel to have no payments. Yeah. You, it's audible. You can, uh, you can hear yeah. Uh, yeah. this relax all through this 10,000 people. It's audible. You, you physically feel the shift in the auditorium. Yeah. It's crazy. And that's, that's, how, that's, what, um, that's what we've done to ourselves in this country. We're just frenetic. We're so tight. Yeah, we're frenetic. Yeah. Get, 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 get the next thing. Answer the next mean tweet. That's right. Run, yeah. run, 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 run. Fight, 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 fight. Yeah. And I don't have any real friends. I don't have any money. And I'm just... Everything's just... There's no margin. There's no peace. There's no relaxation. One of my favorite things on this They're show... pissed off all the time. All the time. Is to watch the debt-free scream, and you ask them, how does it feel? And they... 100%. Their They're, face changes, their bodies change. And, and, and if it's a couple, they, they cuddle in a yeah. little closer. But you know? when, you, when you ask them, hey, what was it like? Take us back to the beginning. Their body goes back. Yeah, they it can remember it. It remembers. Yeah. It remembers. And then all of a sudden... Oh, that stuff yeah. you talk about on your show all the time, I think about it. We are I'm free. About yeah. We're free. Yeah. It's a, there's a physical change. And so the stress-related illnesses have too many times finances at their root oh absolutely and decisions we've made on our they put our put ourselves in that and it just people are walking around with one big ball of stress and forgive yourself out. yeah sell yeah. that car and then be yeah. free go move be free. on move on if that's the dumbest thing you ever did you're a freaking genius. you win <laughs> you're a genius that puts this hour of the ramsey show in the books Hey, it's John Deloney, co-host of The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? A lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, go to RamseySolutions.com slash show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Dr. John Deloney. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life, your money, your relationships, your mental health, your job, your career. It's all right here on The Ramsey Show. Kevin is with us in Dallas to start off this hour. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Hey, sir. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Yes, sir. So um, my question I had is my uh, my wife and I, we are debt free. We don't have any payments or anything. And so we are currently um, retiring or we're currently trying to retire with 15 percent um, being put away. But we're wondering um, how much more we should be trying to do. Since are we don't your have house paid off, too? Or... Yes, sir. Oh, then 15 percent doesn't apply. That's only until you get your house paid off. After your house is paid off, you should max out all your retirement options because you should have plenty of money left over after that to still have fun. Okay. So you got a four hundred one k? Um. Yeah. So my my wife has um four hundred one k. I have one too. Um. Max them uh, both and max uh, out two I've, Roth IRAs. So max out two IRAs and both of our Roths. Yep. All right. in good growth stock mutual funds. How much? Should, what's your household it's income? Um. So we bring in about um, one one sixty between my my wife and I. How old are you? Um, twenty six. Oh, you're gonna be so rich! It's unbelievable. Good grief, Kevin! Congratulations! How'd you get your house paid off that early, man? Way to go! Thank you so so much. Really, um, I think it was just because the way that my parents raised uh, raised my siblings and I. We I 
I had always been um, kind of a saver, but we just got this little house, the the not nicest look, looking house on the street in a pretty nice nice area of town, and then just kind of fix it up with my dad and I, and um, got married. Just had a uh, baby like a few weeks ago, so way to go, yeah, man! Really what's this house? Happy. What's this house worth? So currently, um, I think we're thinking it's about a hundred k or so. So. It's um, not too bad for a, a starter home. I, yeah, Kevin, I, you've done a really, really good job of getting started here. Yeah, I would max out your retirement, and then I'd start saving some money on a side, in addition to that, in a mutual fund to, to move up in-house and pay cash for the move up. You've just done such a great job getting started because you have no payments in the world. You make a lot of money and a brand-new baby. Man, you just got you got life by the tail. Well done. Well done. And high five to your dad and mom. Man, great job. And make sure you pass this along to your little one, too. Yeah. All right. Good for you. This is legacy change stuff right here. Well done. Denisha's in Austin, Texas. Hi, Denisha. How are you? Hello? Denisha? Hello? Hi, Hello? Denisha. How are you? Hi. I'm fine. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Okay. So I have a little situation um <laughs> anytime somebody starts a call with okay and have a situation it's gonna be great go for it okay so i uh just um i have a lot of credit card debt a lot of it and i'm in, a sc- I'm in school and i just got a new job very very proud of my job because uh going to school for accounting i've been presented a lot of opportunities and it's been really great for me so i'm pretty happy what, what, what are you calling about that you didn't call about that what, i'm sorry no i what'd didn't call do? about that you're avoiding it yeah what is it my my spouse is very upset with me why what'd you do i just got my tax i just got my tax return and i paid off all the credit cards and why is he upset that you're debt free because we're broke and he said, Hey, we can just pay the minimums. So why in the world would you just pay the, pay the whole thing that way? Cause we don't have a lot of money. So he's like, you just use all of our tax return to pay all the credit card debt. Okay. How long have you guys been married? Uh, seven years. How old are you? 30. Okay. Does he work? He's disabled. He's fully disabled. Okay. What's the nature of his disability? Uh, bilateral amputee. Okay. Wow. All right. And so he has disability income is all he has coming in? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So the problem is not that you paid off the credit card debt or that you didn't pay off the credit card debt. The problem is, is that the two of you are not working together. Yes, sir. And so you should never, he should never be surprised by a money move you make because you should have both decided the money move together. You actually did the right thing in the wrong way. Yes, sir. That makes sense? It does make sense. So his, his opinion is wrong. His anger is right. Yes, sir. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Why'd you feel like you had to go behind his back? Did you know what he was going to say? I knew he was going to say that we shouldn't have done it because he said, we can just pay the minimums. That's yeah. all they ask for. And I said, but we're trying to get a house. We're in my dad's house. He wants us out. Yeah. Not because he doesn't like us here. But, but he because wants he wants you to be self-sustaining and have dignity. Correct. So yeah. I'm trying to get us to that point. And so that's why. Yeah. It's hard, huh? Marriage is yeah. hard. Y'all struggling? We're really stressed. I'm so sorry. We have a disabled child who is in and out of the hospital as well. Man. So she's our blessing, but she's it's just hard in that way too. So So I've walked I've walked alongside folks in your situation. Tell me if I'm if I'm on the money or if I'm missing the boat here. That in many ways you are both a wife and a mother. You run the household, except when um your disabled husband leans up and says, well, I want to be a part of this decision. So you're responsible yeah. for everything. You need to be out running and doing everything except when I want to weigh in. Is that, is that fair? That's absolutely correct. So you carry everything, including the quote unquote bad decisions that you made on your own, which are supposed to be right. So here's what I really want you to do. Would your husband go talk to a marriage counselor with you? 
I don't know. I don't know if he thinks that we're having a problem. <laughs> okay. That tells me that you're not being honest with him. And I know that I don't want to dump it all on you because you may not be safe to be honest, but you got to. Because here's what I'm afraid is going to happen. You're going to get a new job and you're going to make great money and you're going to go meet coworkers who are going to light you up. They're going to love you. And they're going to fill gaps in your relationships, uh, in, in, in a relational needs that you have that your husband hasn't been doing or that y'all have gotten so far apart. And what's going to happen is you're going to make some – you're going to, what you just did going behind his back is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And so I want you to find a place where we can start having open and direct conversations. Because like Dave said, you did the right thing with the money. He did it in the wrong way. And I don't want this to, you to look up five years from now and your family's falling apart. Yeah, his opinion was wrong, but his right to be in on the decision was right. Yeah. So the two of you need to start yeah. making all the decisions together all the time. And you need some practice at that. You're, you don't have the muscles to do that. So you need to get with a good marriage counselor to help you develop that. And uh, yeah, you do have a problem. You have a lot of problems and you need to work on them. Get right in the middle of them. Look, I love real estate and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information. personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jay's in Wichita, Kansas. Hi, Jay. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Uh, I'm I'm 36 and my wife's 35. Uh, she's a school teacher and I'm a farmer. We've got our house and our vehicles paid for. Uh, my equipment's paid for. All right. Um, yeah, but we, we do. We did buy a farm, a quarter ground here a couple of years ago, and we owe about one hundred eighty thousand on it. Um, my dilemma is, uh, I've got three kids. I've got a six-year-old boy, a three-year-old boy, and a one-year-old daughter, and my wife is pregnant with twins. So we're uh, we're we're out of room in our house, and I've had several contractors come out to look at doing an addition, and they're all. I mean, it's one hundred eighty thousand dollars to do that. So. I'm looking for advice. Your house is on your farm? Well, we, we bought a quarter of ground. No, we, we own the house, but we live very, very rural. Uh, but, yeah, we, we we did buy a quarter of ground for uh, when we owe 180 on it, but the house is paid for. No, I'm sorry. We is the house, is your house on your farm? No, no, sir. Uh-uh. Okay. So your house is in a subdivision or it's a simple city lot or no. what? No, we we live a long ways from town. I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. How much acreage is around the home? Uh, about five acres. You own five acres in a house. Okay. Because it's a yeah, lot easier to yeah. move. But even, I mean, even if we were open to that, there's there's nowhere to move around here. I mean, the closest town to us has 300 people, and there's nothing for sale, and it's just it's not an option. And, you know, this old house we've done so much to, 
uh, we kind of feel like we need to keep moving forward. Well, I don't, um, that, cause you're, you're building another house is what you're doing. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is basically a, you know, you, and I'm not sure you're going to end up with anything you're going to like when all this is done. It's very difficult to do a remodel that doubles the size of a house and not end up with a pretzel. Yeah. Well, yeah, like I said, we've had several people come out and look, and, and I'm comfortable with them. I'm just uncomfortable with a paid-for house and then, you know, spending yeah. that much. But like I said, they're, they're moving, moving, there's nowhere to move. I mean, that's that's really not an option, and we, we do need more room. Okay. Anytime somebody tells me it's really not an option, uh, my ears perk up because what you're doing is you're backing yourself into a corner to justify a decision you're about to make that you so, don't feel comfortable with. I, I kind of think it might be easier to buy a five acre track down the road and build a house. But wouldn't that cost? I mean, wouldn't that cost double what we're doing? No. I mean, that, well, I mean, you're going to sell the one you're in. Well, I mean, I guess, but I'm, I mean, I've got my shop I work out of. I've got a heated shop in another building and all that stuff that I, you know, I need to work on equipment over the winter. So build a shop on the new property where you build a new house. I mean, you can do a $180,000 addition if you want to do one. I mean, there, there's nothing keeping you from doing it. So I'm not really sure what your question is because you, I think you've already decided you're going to do it. So I guess you're just going to do it. Yeah. I mean... The only other way I know to do it is to maybe end up with a better property when it's all said and done that was new from the ground up rather than a piece together house. Because I'm just telling you, man, when you add on and add on and add on, it is very difficult to create a practical property that is not impossible to get rid of later because you, you design this weird thing that your 180,000 on the old house stuck on the side of it. So so very hard to do. Let me ask you like so let me make sure I'm I'm, I'm clear here. Let's say his current house is worth 120. I'm just trying to do easy math. So he would sell it for 120, go build a $300,000 new house with a shop. With a shop. So we're less talking about dollars and cents here and more. You're going to end up with a wonky donkey house that you can't sell. Mm -hmm. because you have if you're not careful you will i mean it can be done but it's very difficult yeah. it's a lot easier just to build absolutely just start over yeah yeah it's a lot of people do teardowns just at a renos and i got a hint that he really like they've put some some sweat equity in this house and so we are forced to stay here and that's what i want to press you're not no, forced. you're not you're not forced to stay anywhere all right there's nothing there's nothing holding you there except your emotions all right and so um you need to really decide you know and and if you keep a house because you have a heated shop that was a dumb idea yeah because you can build a heated shop, that's a, that's a cheap ad. That's not that's not an expensive ad. The expensive ads all these bedrooms and baths for all these kids. So, um, but if, if you want to if you want to do the hundred eighty thousand dollar renovation, you can do that too. But you're going to be back in debt, and you got a mortgage, and you're going to have to pay the mortgage off then. And you put it on fifteen year or less. That's more no more than a fourth of your take home pay, and you get it paid off as fast as you can. It's very difficult to do emotionally to go back into debt, but you're going to go back into debt either way. If you're going to have a house, because apparently, you know, you've got a huge family now and a tiny house. And so you're going to, you're going to make a move some way or another to get a place to put all these kids. Yeah. So, um, I'd rather you know, get what you want for, for the money. Yeah. Then. I think you'll end up with a cleaner deal by making a move, but if you want to do the renovation, do the renovation, just be careful that you do it with a lot of planning and really think through. You know, because I've been in houses where you have to walk through one bedroom to get to the other. Absolutely. You know, and this is just, it's just poor design is what it amounts to. And it's just weird. And, um, you know, the old saying, and it's not because he's calling from a country thing, but the old saying is you build it like a country house, you just keep adding on rooms. And, and you know, instead of beginning with the end in mind right. with a blueprint from the top down, and you just, there's a room over there, and then there's a room over there, and then there's a room over there, now there's an addition over there. And, and it just, that's a, that's a classic saying. And there's a reason it's a proverb. Uh, Pat's in Minneapolis. Hi, Pat. How are you? Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. How can we help? That's good. I've got a question for you. You, I heard an ad for the, on your show just now about term life insurance and how we should get it until you uh, build a certain amount of wealth. At what point, what, what, what level of wealth are we talking about? Uh, when can I get rid of my life insurance? Well, self-insured, the definition of being self-insured for life insurance purposes is if you die 
does your wife have enough money and investments left to take care of life and not have a substantial change in her situation? And so, okay. you know, uh, usually that means you've got everything paid off. The kids are grown and gone. And, you know, you got half a million to $3 million in your mutual funds or something like that. That's usually what it means. But you can just start asking yourself the question, if you died, how old are you? Uh, 52. And what's your net and worth? my wife's 53. Uh, we have uh, 3.1 in assets. Okay. Any of it income producing? Do they make money? No, it's just uh, Roth IRA. Okay, so it's all in retirement. Uh, the home, yeah, it's all in retirement stuff. Okay, so if you died home between guy. now and 59 and a half, she would have some of that as an inherited IRA that she could access, and she'd be fine. Well, she's she's the one making the money. Okay. Well, then if she, <laughs> then if she dies, would you be okay? Yes. That well, right now, I think you guys right can live off of the income to, created by three million dollars or two we million. We both have two million on each other. You don't need it. What's that? You don't need it. That's that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. And she's she earns uh our combined girl. Well, she earns three thirty. Right well, now, the way you could now. the way you could determine this is to say, if she passed away, could I use some of those mutual funds and the income off of them to live a very nice life? And the answer is yes, you could. Yeah. Without any insurance. Okay. And if you died, could she, with her income? Yeah, she can make it with her income if she didn't even have any mutual funds, and she still got the same mutual funds to work for. Okay. All right. Do you mind if I ask you one more quick question? Uh, if it's super quick. Yeah, we're running up to the clock. Go quick. Okay. Uh, we owe like 290 on our house, and I only have about 110 in savings for. I'd dig up some money and get that sucker paid off. That's the answer to your question. Pay it off. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. Tracy's with us in Seattle. Hi, Tracy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dr. Dr. John. Hey, what's up? I've got a question. I've got a question for you. My husband and I are having a bit of an arm wrestle about this. Um, in May, I turned 62. In September, my husband turned 65. And in 128 days, who's counting, I retire. <laughs> so I am like so excited. I'm spitting bubbles. Um, what I want to know, we what, what want to know is when can we start drawing Social Security? What we're living on now is his his pension and my paycheck which net is about 55 50 a month. 
and then November in August I'll get my first uh, retirement pension, which will be gross about thirty one hundred dollars, and then after taxes and my my employee contribution for my retiree health and his supplemental insurance will come out of my pension check. So starting like August or September in September, his net pension is like twenty two fifty. My gross pension is about thirty one hundred. So I'm and I'm not sure what the net's going to be on that. So when should we start? And we're not drawing anything from his pension or his his four hundred one k or other retirement resources we've got. How much is in your yeah. nest eggs? Um, total net worth between our house, which is paid off, his 401k, my deferred comp, savings, etc. We're right between probably 2.9 and 3.1. Way to go. You've done such a great job. Congratulations. How, yeah, much, of this did, how much of this did you inherit? Um, just less than a year ago, I inherited... About three hundred thousand. So you were already millionaires. Well, maybe we were, we were already millionaires. We were worth about two, between two point six and two point seven when my mom passed away. Yeah. Wow. You've done so well. Congratulations. Very well done. Yeah, thank you. So the thank bottom you. line answer is this: it doesn't matter. Social Security doesn't mean beans to you. You got three million dollars. You can do yeah. whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. Now, if you want to do, yeah, a, if yeah. you want to have a math discussion just for the theory of it and the fun of it, Social Security dies when you die, and it's a negative rate of return. The money you put into Social Security, you will never get all of it out. Right. So you might as well get all you can get as fast as you can get. So I take it early and often, and just throw it into an investment if you don't need it. Yeah, and the crazy thing to add into the mix, my husband's thinking of going back and getting a job. You know, I mean, it's like we don't we don't need him to be working, and here I am on the verge of retiring. It, 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 none of, none of this matters. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. Yeah. Social Security, little bitty amount of money, three million dollars, a lot of money. Your your whole yeah. your whole life is governed by the fact that you have the returns on three million dollars to live out the rest of your life in style with incredible generosity and with incredible enjoyment. And if you never got a social security check ever, it wouldn't affect this discussion. If you get one, right. it doesn't affect this discussion. It's a mathematical discussion, is all it is. It's just a, like a little math riddle is all it is but it's it really does not affect your life because of how great a job you've done building wealth you did what you're supposed to do you didn't depend on social insecurity thank god it's not 50 percent of your income or 70 percent of your income it's one percent or less than one percent of your income because your income should be three four hundred thousand dollars a year well off of this off of these returns on this investments you know and so two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year. And we're talking about, you know, Social Security's gonna be nothing. It's nothing. So it's a freaking joke, which is what it's always been. And by the way, a lot of people retire and then a few months later say, I'm gonna go get a part time job or I'm gonna go back and do something. It's not always because I need the money. In fact, it's often not because I need the money. It's because I miss the social engagement. I miss the purpose. I miss doing something that I love, the reason to get out of bed in the morning. So I wouldn't knock on that if he wants to go back to work. Um, I'd have a broader conversation about what y'all's life is going to look like together when you retire in exactly 128 days, right? Yeah. Isn't that fun? That's fun. You've done such a great job. Well done. Well done. So I would take it, I would take it all as quickly as I can get it. But it doesn't matter. So I'm not going to have a big arm wrestle over it. It doesn't matter. Thank God. The reason it doesn't matter is because you built wealth. And I think we can all tell that in an arm wrestling match, she would win. <laughs> Rachel's in St. Louis. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. Um, I just have a, a quick question. Um, my husband and I were in our mid-50s. Our kids, our three kids are 
out of the house. The only debt we do have currently is is our house. We owe one thirty on that. We have one eighty in savings, thirty five in our checking. So basically, about two ten, and about four hundred in retirement. Why have you not paid off your house? Well, we're getting there. I'm. He's coming around. Why were so. you? Why, why you have to get there? Why don't you just do it? I, that's what that's what I am wanting to do because I know that's what she, what you always advise. Well, the only reason husband, I would advise it is it's smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why does your husband well, not want our, to pay off the house? Our financial advisor was telling us she's encouraging us to take that one thirty and put it with him, where he can make a commission. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah she was saying now the time to buy. Okay. <laughs> yes, new time, new financial advisor time. They do not have your best interest. They're trying to pad their portfolio. I gotcha. Okay. Because he's a, my husband is the main breadwinner. I, I teach preschool, so mine's supplemental. He has a base salary of 75 plus bonuses, so he can average about 140 to 175, depending. Um, what does that matter know, in this discussion? Here. Pay your house off today. Okay. Have a party. Congratulations. Doesn't, you're doesn't dead free. Your, your opinion is not invalid because you teach preschool. It actually makes your opinion, <laughs> opinion more valuable. Okay. Because you put up with small humans I, that are crazy. <laughs> all day and their parents which are worse <laughs> yeah i think because the just that security of thinking you have that and i mean you want security have a paid for house nobody right. can ever take it from you ever 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 it's yours yeah okay listen here's all the right. thing here's the thing if you fire your financial advisor and get one that actually is doesn't have that has your best interest at heart and you pay off your house and you just discover that it's a horrible experience you can go get your mortgage. <laughs> okay. Go take a hundred thirty thousand dollar, yeah, uh, a home improvement loan and invest that money. There you go, an equity loan. This is how that works. Yeah, yeah. Immediately, don't pass go. So, um, yeah. And here's the thing: we're probably exaggerating a little bit, possibly, that the financial advisor is not just trying to pad the portfolio. He's probably one of these fools that actually believes that you should stay in debt on your house because you can invest and make more money. They're looking at, they're saying, I can earn you 10% and your your yep. your yep. APR is, is 3%. Why yep. would you do that? Yep. And they left out common sense and risk, mm -hmm. and they left out the toll on your relationships, the toll on your body, the toll on when there's a pandemic. I'm looking over my shoulder. You know, I paid for a house. You, it's one of the building blocks of wealth in all the data that we have from real millionaires, not financial advisors with an opinion, right. but from real millionaires. Pay your house off. They pay off their house and they build their 401ks and retirement. That's what they do. All the data says that. And, and so he, he might not be uh, just trying to rip you off. He might just be dumb. But either one's dangerous. <laughs>